ever get one of those log building sets when you were a kid? Yeah, I hear you. I did too. Those things. Ugh. Okay, here's the deal, as you all probably know. On the box, they show you all of these beautiful log mansions, skyscrapers, really cool stuff. You can just imagine creating your own log Manhattan skyline. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> and then you open the box and out roll these four pathetic little log blocks. So you can make a square, kind of, except they're all different lengths and they never quite Bit right anyway the point is that those kits didn't come with enough stuff to build anything even remotely cool or useful and they weren't even interoperable with any of your good building kits like legos or even tinker toys you'd have to go out and invest a fortune in log stuff to even get started on that stupid skyscraper Anyway, sorry, <laughs> a little carried away there. Let's talk about IP-based design. You've got your favorite IP blocks from all over the place and your own ways of managing them. And then you get a new tool suite and, well, you're having visions of those stupid logs all over again. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and IP-based design doesn't have to be like those logs of yesteryear. Today, I'm talking with Tim Van Evenhoven about how you can customize the Xilinx Vivado design suite to work smoothly with your IP-based design flow. Also, before we get started, remember to click that link. There you can download a free white paper and check out a video that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Tim. Thanks for joining me again. Hey, Amelia. Good to see you again. Now, Tim, when you say IP flows in Vivado, what exactly are you referring to? So with the increasing use of IP in Xilinx All Programmable Devices, Vivado was designed from the beginning to support an IP-centric design flow that allows you to add IP modules to your design from various design sources. Oh, okay. So by IP flows, I'm referring to the methodology of incorporating IP in your Vivado design. So Vivado is shipped with a catalog of Xilinx IP that's ready to use. Cool. So Tim, you mentioned Xilinx IP in the IP catalog, but can I add my own IP to the Vivado IP catalog? Absolutely. So we designed the Vivado IP catalog to be extensible, so you can add your own IP to the catalog, purchase IP from one of the Xilinx Alliance program members, system generator for DSP and Vivado high-level synthesis are also integrated, so you can easily create new IP from those environments. Cool, okay. So you can even build a new piece of IP by connecting together multiple IP in your design. Sweet. The IP packager flow is how you can connect your own custom IP to the Vivado IP catalog. The Vivado IP catalog is based on the industry standard IP exact, but you're not required to learn anything about the standard. Good. <laughs> so yeah, the IP packager is a wizard-like flow that automatically creates the necessary files according to the IP exact standard to enable a custom IP to show up in the IP catalog and then be used in Vivado. Very cool. So this sounds like a really powerful way to build up an IP catalog. How do I use all of the IP that I have? There's multiple design flows that our customers use, but one of our most popular is a flow in Vivado called the Manage IP Flow. Okay. So it provides a number of ease of use benefits to designers. It allows exploring the Vivado IP catalog without the need to create a full project. It supports creating and customizing an IP in a remote location and enables an IP to be created once and referenced by multiple users. Okay, Tim, back up a second. What do you mean when you say customizing an IP? So IP in Vivado comes with a customization GUI that allows you to set parameters on the IP specific for your needs. Ah. For example, if you're instantiating a core multiple times, you can generate the core with some shared logic once and then generate the same core without the shared logic for your second IP. Okay. And then you can connect those together and that way you can save valuable resources in the device. Very cool. Okay. Another customization you can do is expose additional transceiver control and status ports at the top of your IP. So not everyone's going to want to do this, which is why it's an option, but for many users it really simplifies access to these signals. Very interesting. So I'm assuming that you're continually enhancing the IP in Vivado. How do I take advantage of the latest version of IP that's available? 
So we do often enhance IP with new releases of Avado. And now I'm very excited that all of the IP in our IP catalog support an automated upgrade in Vivado. Okay. So upgrading to the latest version of an IP is highly recommended, but is not absolutely required. And that, that's important. Yeah. So although we focus our testing on the current and previous versions of the IP, you can use existing generated output products without upgrading the IP in your design if you're not ready. Okay, cool. So when Vivado is open and Vivado detects that some IP is out of date, you're prompted to generate an IP status report. And this report gives the current and recommended versions for each IP in your project. And then also provides hyperlinks so you can view the change logs and upgrade logs for each one of these IPs so you can decide if upgrading is the right thing for you given where you are in your design cycle. Cool, okay. I like how I get to control which IP are upgraded. Now, my understanding is that most designers of all programmable devices use a revision control system for their source code. Is that flow possible with Vivado? Yeah, you're correct. A large percentage of our customers do use revision control systems. So while Vivado doesn't officially support any particular revision control system, Vivado was designed to work with many popular systems. Okay. So for example, key project files and IP exact files are all ASCII instead of binary, keeping revision control systems in mind. So you can trade off runtime with the number of IP files you want to manage in your revision control system. Okay. So Xilinx recommends revision controlling the entire IP directory to provide the most flexibility for regeneration and upgrades in the future. And this is also the solution with the least runtime to recreate the design. However, other options are available that require substantially fewer files be managed at the expense of future flexibility and runtime. Okay, so does Vivado support design flows with third-party synthesis tools for the IP in Vivado? Yes, that's a common request from some of our key customers. Vivado IP is officially only supported with Vivado Synthesis. We have optimized the testing of the IP with Vivado Synthesis and deliver IP constraints for Vivado. Okay. However, Vivado can automatically create a Verilog stub and VHDL component declaration when it creates a design checkpoint for an IP. So you can treat the IP as a black box with no I.O. buffers in a third-party synthesis tool. Okay, cool. So then the netlist from the third-party synthesis tool can be implemented in Vivado. That makes sense. So it sounds like you're really helping us automate our design flow without dictating a design flow. Yes, that's exactly what we want to do. Vivado really does provide a powerful IP-centric design flow where you can leverage Xilinx IP, Alliance Program Member IP, or create and share IP within your company. And then when new versions of that IP is available, take advantage of it. Very cool. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thanks so much for joining me today, Tim. Thanks for inviting me. Also, before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free white paper and check out a video that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal channel on YouTube or the on-demand section on eejournal.com. 